so we got kind of this idea of who the who the senior guy is. It's you know it's based maybe not necessarily on just time on, but attitude, um, experience, willingness to to invest in the younger guys, um, including the officer. I think that was a huge point you made. Um, okay, talk to me a little bit more about the role of the senior guy, whether it's at a fire in the station on runs. Kind of give me give me some of your thoughts on that. Um, I know it's pretty broad, but maybe sure. maybe dial some of that stuff in for me. Well, one of the things you got. Um at, at a fire, it's there. There are such teaching moments because it's it's real time. Uh, when you're looking at the rookies, um, they're sitting there looking at you, and they're not going to hear what you say probably at a fire. They will see what you do every single time. I, I, there's no doubt in that. I remember hmm. going back because you know a lot of times when you come out of rookie school, they always tell you to look across the guy. What if he's putting his air pack on? It's time to put yours on. Yeah. If he's bunking out, you bunk out. Uh, stuff like that. But um, the, the other thing that you, you see a lot of times is the guys coming out of rookie school, they want to go, you know, a thousand miles an hour right off the bat. Uh, the senior guy, I mean, for me, I was always slow, methodical, you know, the old slow is fast and fast is slow. Yeah. Uh, or fast is slow is slow is smooth, smooth is fast. There you go. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that was one of those deals where uh, you just do that repetition uh, so many times. So at a fire, um, you know, right probably within the last five years, had a really good crew over at 37, especially the paramedics. They all wanted to learn. Uh, they're on the ambulance a lot, so when it came to fires, they really wanted to, you know, have a, a broad base of knowledge. And, and I was more than happy to share that with them. But like I told them, at that point in my career, uh, a lot of times things at fires it seemed in slow motion to me. You know, you hear about the the, the batters in pro baseball said, you know, that baseball looks as big as a grapefruit. Well, that, that was kind of was for me. I mean, you, you've hmm. done it so many times. A lot of that stuff. You can anticipate what's coming next, whether it's good or bad or whatever. But uh, uh, but you want to impart uh, that wisdom to those guys, because especially like if you're on a truck crew, you know, you need to be thinking a step ahead. You don't need to be responding to what exactly is happening. You need to be responding to what yeah. may happen. And I think at a fire, a senior guy brings that out a lot of times. And um, that's where I always uh, with the officers that I worked with, I always tried to be that extra set of eyes, that extra set of ears and to, to complement what they're going to do because they're going to have to make the choices. I, I always thought, you know, my captain or my lieutenant, whoever it was, they're still my boss. I may have more time on than they do, but, but they're still the ones that's going to make that decision. Um, and if we're not going to step on that landmine because of the decision he made, well, man, I'm all in. All, it's a win-win for all of us. Uh, but if, if I can give him some input of something that I see, well, then that also makes him look good and, and the whole crew, you know, we all get to go home uh, mm -hmm. into that day. But uh, uh, around the uh, around the station, um, again, I think uh, I think a lot of times the uh, the actions speak a whole lot more than just trying to talk at uh, guys. And I know now um, I hate to use the term millennials, but it it, it, is, what it is it, it is what it is. Yeah. And so, um, but that's that's one of those things where if we show those guys what our traditions are in the fire service, if we show them why we do it. Uh, the way we do it here in Dallas, and 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 you explain why to them. That's uh, that's one of the big things because I don't think the guys are are uh, uh, not wanting to learn. I think they want to know why. I think they I think they're yeah. looking for more depth of why we do things. So I think that's where the senior guys' uh, role comes in. Is you you've got to be good at your job. I mean you've got to be passionate about it, and you have to know what you're doing. You can't. I mean these. These young guys are sharp. You feed them a line of bullcorn, they're going to pick up on it real quick. So yeah. you've got to be good at what you're doing. I, I, that's where that whole experience comes in, right? Sure. Um, uh, one of the things is you were talking about the fires. Um, going back, I was studying for you know lieutenant uh, exam and promotional process, mm -hmm. and Chief Odell, um, you know, Bubba, you're asking the wrong question when we were doing some scenarios and stuff. And one of the things he said to me was, you need to start asking the question, how do I slow this down? Right. And, you know, I, I, that can go so many different ways. You know, how do I slow this fire down? How do I slow, you know, wh whatever the, the, the thing is really, I mean, it's how do I slow myself down? Sure. I mean, especially me as a young guy, young officer. I mean, I still have it in me to just amp up, right? The heart rate goes up. Um, nowhere seen, you know, the amount of fire and the amount of incidents that you guys have. Um and so, yeah, that, that conscious effort to, to slow myself down, to slow everything down in that whole smooth is fast concept. Mm -hmm. um, just thinking about it that, you know, like, I feel the pressure to do that as an officer. You know, I sat down with my guys recently and just said, okay, hey, what do you expect from an officer? Like, what, what do you guys expect? Mm -hmm. um, it's easy for me to come to the table and say, what do, you, what do I expect? One of the 
resounding things that every single guy said on, on, on my crew was, you need, you need to have your head about yourself. Um, right. One guy pipes off, he goes, you need to roll steady. You know, I'm like, ah, <laughs> I see what you did there, smart. I see what you did there. Yeah, um, but just even even calling our, 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 our more senior guys, you know, let's say 10 and up, guys with 10 years and up, like, hey, we need you guys to step up in this route because right. it is easier for the younger guys and us younger guys to to quickly lose some of that. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if you're listening to this and you're a guy with 10 or plus, I mean, I mean, really heed what, what, uh, what David's saying here. Um, okay. So let me kind of pose this same question two different ways. Okay. So what should the younger members at the station expect from the senior guy or the senior guys? I think they should expect everything. I mean, and I'm going on my experience when I came out, uh, I was, like I said, I was lucky. I had a second driver on an engine. I had a, a driver on a squad, and different than what we have squads nowadays, just a manpower squad. But they would sometimes see the things that I was doing a little bit off, maybe not as efficient, and they just kind of give me tips. But then, after a while, I started learning that, hey, those guys, uh, I mean, my officer has really told me what my job is, what my role is, but these guys showed me how to do it. Hmm. And so I started asking questions, and I'm, I'm sure those two years I was there at that station, those guys got sick and tired of me probably because, I mean, every day I came in, I, it was like, show me something new, show me something new. And sometimes you had to wait till a fire or something, and then sometimes they would, I would see them doing something, and i go, well, I knew that, but they were doing it as habit. It was just something they did every time, like, you know, putting their mask on a certain way and, and stuff like that. And, and uh, so the young guys, I, I mean, I just think that um, um, they, sh they should be able to get whatever they need. Uh, out of uh, out of a senior guy, a lot of times you know they're going to be intimidated when they go talk to an officer. They're they're wearing the bars on their collar and stuff like that. Mm. So a lot of times that's one of those things. But a senior guy is kind of one of them. So uh, and and a lot of times you know I mean there were some things you know sensitive subjects that came up. And a lot of times I just pulled the younger guys aside and I said, Hey, look, that's not the way we do it here. Mm. You know, and that's not the way we do it in Dallas, or that's not the way the fire service handles that. So. So let's look at this, and I and, and I always tell them, you know, if you got any questions or if we need to talk about it more, let's let's get into that. Uh, but let's let's talk about that. But um, um, and and you know, uh, just just saying it a lot of times is not enough. But if if you're if if I'm doing it, if, if I'm going out there and just I, I can just tell you this by experience, a lot of times I, I was always, I mean, even up to my last shift, showed up at the station five till six, hmm. got in there. I'm putting my stuff on, and I know that rookie's sitting there watching me. I'm checking my mask completely 100%. I'm putting, checking my flashlight. I'm checking my everything, past all of that stuff. I know he's watching me, so he's, he's learning just by seeing me do my regular job. So um, I, just, I just think that they ought to expect everything hmm. that they can get from us because it, we ought to be an open book because that's the, the tradition of the fire department is that older guys teach the younger guys, mm -hmm. and that's the way – that's the way they, you know, it, it happens. You know, I was going through one of the old annuals and I'm looking at the lieutenants in there and it's, it's, it's not any young guys, right, you know. Right. Um, it's definitely guys with more time on than I had. Right. Um, so what should, what should the station officer, what should a guy like me, you know, I'm three years into being a lieutenant, 10 years on the department almost. Mm -hmm. um, what should I expect from my senior guys? Well, and, and there again, I, I think when you shift away from, from the rookies and stuff and everything, that they're with the officers and the senior guys, there's got to be two things. I think communication is key and, and plus trust. And I don't just mean that one way. I mean that on, on, on both ways because, um, like I said, I, I worked, I, I got lucky. My About 17 years, I was at 36. I had a, a captain named Chris Pearson, and man, he, he and I just clicked. Mm -hmm. And we worked together for 17 years. And he, he, he was my boss and I understood that, but it was also, he, he respected my experience and my passion for what I did. Um, so we, we were just communicated well with each other. And, and he always told me, you do your job. And he said, I'm not going to question you unless you're going somewhere where we don't need to be, or maybe the chief gives us a different order and we need to change plans or, or maybe not be safe. Yeah. And, uh, I think that's one of the things that, um, uh, a senior guy can do for an officer at the station is he can make him feel safe uh, hmm. with, with what they're doing hmm. uh, because he, he knows that's an extra set of eyes there, uh, you know, working for him. And uh, uh, the other thing is, 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 is I think if you've got a good crew and that kind of starts with your officer and your senior man on there, whether it's a driver or second driver or an older private, um, your, your crew's going to have that respect because uh, you know how it is in the fire service. You don't have a good crew. 
guys don't trust you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's, that's one of those things. And sometimes if you can't do the simplest of tasks, um, that that's going to reflect at the fire scene and guys are not going to trust you. So, you know, when that officer says, um, you know, let's train for me, a senior guy I always volunteered to do the training. Um, you know, that was, that was what I kind of expected my officer, you know, let, let me be a role in that. Let me have a part in that. And I can show you yeah. uh, the stuff that, that, uh, that we should do. Um, some of the things, uh, that, um, not really expecting it from the from the officer standpoint, you know, but uh, I always took the role that, uh, you know, I knew how to do infers. I knew how to do inspections. Hmm. Uh, I knew how to do plugs. I knew how to enter those in the computer. Uh, and, you know, and if you go back and look at it, that's things that your chief can track just by pulling up on his computer. Mm -hmm. So if I go in there and I make sure, if I get the other privates and stuff and everything, whether it's a driver, I don't know how every station does it. Ours was a little bit different. But if, if I make sure all those infers are done, and I make sure that those plug inspection, plugs and inspections are done. Well, then all of a sudden, my officer looks good mm -hmm. in the eyes of my chief. Mm -hmm. And so there's a little bit of level of respect. So a lot of times, uh, you know, some of the senior guys, they want that respect, but I, I still think that's got to be earned. Uh, just like, you know, the rookies have to earn the respect of the senior guys. I think, I think the senior guys have got to earn that respect with their officer, but, uh, mm. but they need to be an asset to that officer. That, that officer needs to look at them as an asset. Yeah, you know, before we turn these on, I was telling you, and you know, I'll say this on camera. Okay, so me, you know, I made lieutenant with seven years on the department. Right. <laughs> for better, for worse, right? right. Um, you know, and, and I ended up at a station with a guy with 20, I think he had 24 years on at the time, or 23 years on at the time. And, I, and I'll tell you, love him, hate him, like Mikey Polnack made me the officer that I am today. Right. And, and, and allowed me to have some of the success and the influence that I've had with our crew. I'm not going to speak right. outside of that, but just our crew. Right. Um, when it came to things like training, when it came to, you know, making sure that, you know, every guy on that crew knew that it wasn't just on the officer to train mm -hmm. the new mm -hmm. rookie. It was, hey, it's right. all our responsibility. Right. Um, you know, he has that expectation on, on the less senior guys, whether they've got 14, 12, seven years on, right? Um, you know, he, he's, he's been the guy that's grabbed our young paramedic driver and, and pulled him along. And, you know, whether it's, you know, let him know, hey, yeah, that's, we're headed down the right path. Or, mm -hmm. hey, we, we need to tweak this here. Right. Um, man, he, he has played a crucial role in, in the success of just the workings of our station. Sure. Sure. Um, and as a young officer, man, that, honestly, it makes me look better than I am, right? right. And right. Um, so, I mean, that's the level of influence that a senior guy can have. Right. Um, so, I, I think what you were saying, too, about... You know, they got to work well together and communicate well right. together. Right. Um, I remember Mikey pulled me aside right when I was even, you know, considering coming over to there. Um, and it was like, hey, let's get on the same page. Sure, sure. And he initiated that conversation, which was which was interesting. I, I, and I think that's vitally important because I can go back to one instance. I had a captain that uh, me and my driver, uh, truck guys, uh, we I'd been a truck guy for a long time, since 91. Uh, this guy had only been on the truck for probably eight or nine years, but... Uh, we enjoyed working together, me and that driver, but we, we, we enjoyed working with our captain, but he wanted to do some training. We said, let, let us do our training today. And so uh, just something as simple as setting lights off the cord reel. <laughs> so what we did was we tried to make it fun. We, you know, you got two cord reels on every truck. We pulled it off and we gave the guys scenarios on both sides, split them up, and we put our officer on one side. And he was kind of grumbling when we came out and he says, I, this is not really that big. And I go, no, you need to look cap because what's going to happen is if we get to a fire and we can do this, nobody's going to say a word. They're mm -hmm. just going to say they did their job. But if yeah. we can't, nobody in our district is going to depend on us yeah. to do the big jobs when we can't do it. And what was funny, he struggled to do that deal. And when we got through, he, he pulled us both aside and he said, thanks for doing that training. Yeah. So sometimes you just have to recognize that, you know, the strengths and weaknesses, um, and I, I don't always think it's it's just a young officer because, you know, like with you, I see, I see uh, you know, you were kind of in four district up here and, and I've seen you take the initiative. You've got, you've got a good attitude about it where you've got some officers that don't have a good mm -hmm. attitude. So um, what the senior guy off, offers uh, may not be that big a deal to him or, you know, may pass it off. So, hmm. I, I mean, I, I would, I tell guys all the time, especially, you know, helping some of these younger cats study for <laughs> these now postponed tests. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Um, you know, we've got a lot of young guys coming up that sure. are potentially going to make lieutenant, and it's like I can tell them from, you know, listen, the most valuable asset you have at, at whatever station you end up at mm -hmm. um, 
and you, you need to recognize this even as a driver now, but that senior guy is right. is your strongest ally. Sure. Um, and, and I think probably the key to that is a little bit of humility. Sure. Um, not something that comes natural easy for me. Um, but if you can put yourself in that position, you know, shake off that bar that you got and right. or that you're about to get, um, it'll it'll go a long way with the senior guy.